this is your host, Trey Donneville. Um, first, uh, thank you for being a listener. Thank you for, for finding the podcast, however that may have happened, um, and, and listening and enjoying uh, the interviews. I, I hope you found them um, revealing and entertaining uh, so far. Uh, and I look forward to doing many more uh, with many types of uh, different people, different writers. But uh, I want to make everyone aware uh, that sometimes there is a, <clears throat> a delay between when I uh, have the interview and when it actually gets published for consumption. Um, anywhere from two weeks to possibly even two months uh, from when I actually talk to the person to when I have the chance to actually publish it just because of you know, life and other things happening. So I just want to make sure everyone aware of that. Um, but uh, this particular interview uh, was recorded on April the 18th, 2022. Um, it is now June 9th, 2022, as I record this. Um, and a uh, wonderful interview. It was a Monday evening. I uh, came by. We had this uh, excellent conversation. Got to pick his brain about uh, his psyching experience and what he was doing and all kind of things. We even talked about encouraging me to go to Bryant Park races again, which I since have done um, and saw this individual there as well. But I um, wanted to make everyone aware of the time gap because sometimes I meet people and they're like, I didn't know this happened a month or two months ago. So wanted to make everyone aware of that. Um, but without further delay, um, I bring you Andre Campbell. Enjoy. This thing is recording and hopefully we'll stay recording and just as i said that well, let me make sure this <laughs> sometimes it chips out i had i did a recording with the guy ross who was i don't know episode 13 or 14 and this thing was was i was recording did the almost the whole interview got to the point where i was wrapping it up and i was like looking here and then looked over and all the lights had gone off and i was like no what happened and then it would be it's batteries in here and it had oh. been running on batteries the whole time, even though it had plugged in, but the little switch wasn't on. And so, thankfully, I caught it the last second, cut the switch on, we recorded the, the last little bit, but I only lost like five seconds or something. Okay, like, okay, I just so bad. happened yeah. to look at the moment it like it had shut off. Either way, um, welcome, and, and who are you? <laughs> My name is Andre Campbell. Okay. Um, do you have a middle name? Antonio. Okay. Double A. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um... Uh, tell me about your, you rode today on the trainer. Yes. What kind of, was you, was it a structured ride? What kind of ride? Yeah, it was a structured ride. I did, uh, over and unders on, okay. a, on a trainer for about an hour. Okay. Um, was that like a, it was Zwift? It was a Zwift ride, yeah. But that was a, um, was that one of the Zwift workouts or like you did your own, like, um, animals in there? So a, f a friend of mine named Lorenzo, mm -hmm. he, he had told me. He had told me to start doing structure training this past January, and he okay. gave me one of the over over and under um, trainers from uh, Trainer Road, and, oh, I, well, the and workouts. I took okay. it and okay. put it into Zwift. Ah, okay. So I okay. do I do that. It's a couple of them that I I, I do. Okay, that's one. Okay, all right. Um, are you using um, are you using Training Peaks? No. Okay. Just just, just Zwift, and okay. I was I was very reluctant to to do structure training. Uh, up until January, it's always just been like right off a of feel. Okay. Um, yeah, and, per and perceived effort. Okay. Um, structure training helps. You know? It helps a lot. But it's not as fun. It's it's not, but um, I'm goal oriented, so like okay. it gives me a target. Okay. And I, and I, you can actually see the benefits, so I I'm happy with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, but um, clearly you didn't start out with structure workouts. Um, uh, how did you get started? Uh, road riding. Man. Um. Yeah, well, I've been riding ever since I was a kid. Not okay. like this, but yeah. ever since I was a kid. Like riding was a means of transportation to get okay. here and there, and just going on adventures as a, as a child. But as you grow up, you know, you, you get to to bigger things: go karts, motorcycles, uh, your own car, and then you know that that goes away, and it's, okay. it's like a childish thing to ride a bicycle again. Um, Seems that way. Yeah, yeah. Came back to cycling in 2017. Okay. Um, my my brother-in-law. When I met him, how long has it been now? About 10 years ago, he's been cycling. I remember him telling me he rode from Short Pump over to, to Chesterfield. I'm mm -hmm. like, brother, you're crazy. <laughs> like, we're in our 30s and yeah. you're, you're riding bicycles that far. You have a car. Yeah. Um, but he just kept, over the years, just kept talking about cycling. And, you know, for me over the years, it's always been 
up and down with my weight because I'll go to the gym, I'll get right, and then I'll I'll be satisfied. So I'll yeah. fall off, I'll gain the weight back, and I'll you know I'll pick up different things. I did boxing one time, okay, um, and you know I'm training people in the gym, but you know I said I needed something that is uh, more consistent. I don't want to run. I don't like jogging, so I said you know let me try this cycling thing out. And I was gonna go to a, a box store like Dick's and, and buy a bike. Yeah, but uh. I talked to him. He's like, no, I recommend like you go to a bike store. Okay. So I went to AG's and I told the guy, hey, I want a bike. He's like, what kind of bike do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, what do you want? I don't know. I want, I want to ride. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to ride? You can ride off road. I would like to ride off road. I'd like to ride on the road. He's like, well, maybe you want like a hybrid, like straight bar. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, what's the difference? He's like, <laughs> he's trying to explain it to me. Yeah. I was like, no, I think I want like the drop bar, the yeah. curve bar yeah. thing. And uh, he's like, okay, maybe you could do like a gravel bike. You know, you can mm -hmm. do a little bit of both. It has little bit of knobbies on it. I'm like, okay, okay, that's uh cool. I'll take that. So nine hundred dollars, I bought me a aluminum jam as heavy as I don't know what. Okay. And uh, I thought I had a road bike, and okay. I would ride it to my boxing gym, yeah, uh, like ten miles. And I thought I was doing something, and it hurt like hell. Twelve mile per hour average. Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so you have this gravel bike, and you start, you're riding around a little bit. Yeah, right. you commuting to, to places and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, when you have this bike, do you? When do you start thinking? Like, when? When does it change? When does it decide? Like, I want to upgrade from this. Um, that took a little while because I had that part about it. Well, I still have the bike. I should loan it. It's loaned out to a friend right now. Okay. Um, but it probably wasn't until a year and a half after that that I okay. started working for the company I'm with now, okay. which uh, is Bueller. Okay. And that's where I met Jeff, Jeff mm -hmm. Clinton. Um, so the culture in that company, I think riding a bicycle is what got me the job because when I mentioned it to my to the GM of the, of yeah. the business, he, mm -hmm. his eyes perked up and we yeah. talked for a half an hour about bikes. Um, but anywho, like the culture of that company was to ride bikes. They would okay. leave for lunch and be gone for an hour and a half, two hours and ride. Um, and it was riding with them that... Um, it, it started to increase and I realized that I, I might want something different. Okay. Um, with them as well, it's like I went from riding in sweatpants and sneakers <laughs> to, okay, you need to put on a kit. And Jeff had to one day pull a kit out of his drawers. Like, you're going to put this on. I was like, I'm not wearing that. <laughs> Mention some of that there. Um, so, uh, so you start riding with them, you know, uh, cause that's like part of the culture, which is great. Um, you said you, wait, new bike? Nope, not new bike yet. Okay. Still, still on that that Jameis. Okay, um, but I'm riding with them, and, I'm, and you know, as they ride, you know, they're talking about this bike or this component, and, and that means nothing to me. I'm yeah. like, it's a bike. You yeah. pedal it, it goes, and you know, as you just keep going, you start hearing more and more, and like you start to get intrigued. Yeah. I think my uh, the GM of the company purposely left one of his bikes in the uh, the warehouse just to taunt me. Because it was just sitting there for, for months. And one day I was like, you know, let me jump on his bike. Yeah. And that bike is now the bike <laughs> I, have. Have now. I bought it off of him, the 2014 Specialized, Specialized Roubaix, oh, which okay. has served me pretty well. Okay. Um, but when I sat on that, I immediately felt the difference. I was like, wow, this, uh, this feels good. Yeah, yeah. You know, sitting on, the, sitting on the new equipment. So you get this, you get this. So you're still just like, Riding around with the the coworkers, kind of mm -hmm. like lunch break, kind of do the long rides and stuff like that. Are these pretty chill rides? Like very pretty? very chill, like okay. sixteen average okay. rides, but okay. we do like twenty miles. Okay, you know? we're, just, we're having conversation, okay. um, but it, the intrigue for it to be greater was there, I think, because um, after the end of every ride, Mike Fleetwood, which is the GM of the, mm -hmm. of the company at that time, he would always like try to initiate a sprint going back to the office. And uh, after seeing a sprint, he's like, oh, my God, we can start doing pace lines. Let's come into my office. Let me start showing you guys some videos and tell you guys what pace lines are all about and 30% efficiency and, and drafting. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? But whatever. I don't have to work, so I'm going to sit here and listen. <laughs> Team building. Yeah. But uh, the, with that, that growing, you know, we started to look for other things, and he – introduced us to, to Raba in okay. the evening. So, uh, our office was really close to Portobello's where Raba rides from, I think, Tuesday ah, yeah, at yeah. 5.30. So we went out there one um, one Tuesday mm -hmm. and jumped in that ride. And 
I think that was just like mind blowing for me. Yeah. Because I remember doing the 16 ish average rise to like all of a sudden I was like 18 and that felt fast to me with this yeah. group of people. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is, yeah. this is cool. Now I'm perplexed. Let's see where this can go. Okay. Um, so you got to do some pace lines. You did the Portobello ride, mm-hmm. um, which is a great, it's a great, pretty safe area to, to start have somebody come out and ride over there in, um, in Verina. Um, but that's cool. So, uh, so, <laughs> Because I completely understand your GM um, being real excited meeting other people who ride. And mm-hmm. just like, I got to tell them about this kind of thing. Um, so that's cool. So you ride on Portobello. You, you start pace lining with these groups. You see, you ride with Raba. And you get a little bit more intrigued. Mm-hmm. And then, like, what's the, what's the next move? Do you just, like, you keep doing those Portobello rides? You, like, you know, when is it, when is it, how does it, how does it kind of go from, it was a mixture of the Portobello rides and, and still with the the office. Um, it was one time going out to Portobello, Mike had pointed out a guy on uh, wearing all black, riding in, <laughs> riding a black canyon with carbon wheels. He's like, look at this bike right here. When he goes by, it's gonna you're gonna hear this whooshing noise. He's so mm-hmm. fast. And then that guy, <laughs> yeah, Chris, mm-hmm. Chris Clark. And yeah. I was like, okay. So my eyes are fixated on this guy. I'm yeah. like, okay, I want to see what this is about. Yeah. So I remember riding with him one time and, um, you know, him taking this really long pull. And uh, he tells me that, you know, it's my turn to take a pull. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Goes, takes me forward. So I'm trying to match what he did. And um, after I finished my pull, after this hill, mm-hmm. he gets back on with Heidi, a girl, and my other coworker, Tyreek. And mm-hmm. they just keep pressing on. Yeah. And, I'm done. <laughs> and I'm just fading away. I'm yeah. like, okay, this, this is the dropping that yeah. I've heard about. Mm-hmm. I got dropped. And yeah. from there, I'm like, okay, I want to see more. Okay. I want more. Now work. this is becoming competitive. I like this. Okay. Um, had you done like sports before? Oh, you yeah. Done, like, competitive sports before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been competitive all my life. Um, track and field, wrestling. Okay. Uh, I was a collegiate football player and played uh, two years of arena football. Okay. Nice. Um, arena football, really? Mm-hmm. Which position? Um, outside linebacker and defensive end. Okay. Hmm. Do you miss it? Hmm? Do you miss it? Um, at times I do. That's why I don't watch the game. Um, a lot of people <laughs> will see me like, hey, you, you watched that game? I was like, nope, did not. Watch too many film in, uh, okay. <laughs> in college. And like now when I watch it, I get real amped up. So <laughs> okay. I don't like watching it. Okay. I can, I can see that. I can see that. Um, um so you, you you start moving faster, right? You you're riding with Portobello or you're riding with the group, me Chris, um, and and you get motivated by that that speed. Mm-hmm. Um, did you like? Did you connect with Chris? You just like just ran into him again? Like how, he how would you, he would come out to the Portobello rides yeah. uh, pretty frequently, and we, we connected. And then it was Chris and Mark out there, mm-hmm. um, and then you know you start get rare of this wolf pack. Mm-hmm. Uh, group. I'm like, okay, so we're gonna do these rides with Wolfpack and go out there. And uh, I remember me and Jeff got dropped from a Wolfpack ride one time, pretty bad. But you know, it was it was still intriguing. And I remember yeah. when we got back to the thing, the guys were like, "Man, you guys did really good." And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. "You guys are lying. Yeah. Like, we just got dropped. How we, yeah. we didn't do good." And they're like, "Man, you're gonna be real good. Yeah. The big guys are gonna catch drafts off of you." And I'm thinking yeah. to myself, like. That ride hurt. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> he dropped me. I don't want to. I don't want to come back out here. Yeah. But you know, after you 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 deal with yourself, you yeah. know, lick your wounds, you you start you reaching out again. Okay. Um, um, but it kind of died out a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Got real busy with work. Started traveling more. You know, uh, I was a project manager, like I said earlier. Um, yeah. And I travel overseas to deal with customers and, and projects. So the the cycling came to. It slowed down for a bit, for about a year. Okay. It was COVID that brought it brought it back on. Okay. Um, so that was 2019, 2018, it, it died down a little bit. Yeah, like about 20, okay. in 2019, yeah. Okay. Um, so COVID came around. Mm-hmm. It was a complicated time to start meeting with new, gr- new people, groups mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, do, what what got you like to, to start riding more regularly? It was probably stopped, I guess. You, yeah, Still travel driving? stopped. Okay. No, no, no. There was there was no travel. Okay. Um, where the office was closed, we had to work from home. It was like, 
all right, what do I do with myself? So okay. at first it's excitement. It's like, yeah, I don't have to go in the office. Yeah. I'm going to drink beer while <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through a case of beer every day. And uh, I'm just excited with this. Yeah. And um, I think we were going through that for like two, three months, just drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, 250 turned into 270 real quick. Okay. And uh, Jeff one day is like, yeah, man, let's, um, we should probably go ride bikes again. You know, like, <laughs> You know, your your test. You te- you took your temperature. I took my temperature. Like, let's go ride bikes. Okay. Let's get outside. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. So we started riding, and then okay. we we recruited our, our other coworker Tyreek to come okay. ride with us. So it'd just be the three of us riding around, just leisurely. Okay. And then one day Jeff is like, "Hey man, I bet you I could lose weight faster than you." And I'm like, "Oh man, why why you have to do this?" <laughs> you know, I think it was his. He had his goal in mind, and and he wanted an accountability partner. So okay. he, he used that to manipulate me to to ride. Okay, because you know I'm not gonna back down from the challenge. So yeah, we we set up, set off on this challenge. Jeff was what three twenty at the time, and mm-hmm. you know at this time at this point now he's two forty two forty ish. Okay, so he's lost a lot of weight. Um, I was two seventy, and, and I think within a month I probably got back down to like two forty. And then it just kept going. It got to 230. And then I think the lowest at that point was like 227, which was in August. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right, just back up then. All right. Um, There's a 30 pound difference in like 30 days ish. Like, what was what was the technique? Like, what was what was going on? Did you not eat? Like, would you just like, were you yeah, I'd, conscious? I'd, I'd starve myself in, okay. in a sense. Um, so, caloric deficit works. Okay. Um, I'm, not starve yourself to the point where like you're sick, but like, yeah. you know, you do a calorie calculator, you can yeah. figure out based on your height, your weight and your activity level, what the appropriate calories is supposed to be. Okay. So if your number is 1900 a day to, to maintain and you're working out, you're going to burn a lot of calories. So okay. I just work off of that and I go around and I look at the back of these packages like, huh, I have a budget to eat that. I can't eat that. I'm not drinking any beer, I'm not drinking any juice, just water because I want mm-hmm. my calories later. And the weight just falls off. Okay. Okay. All right. I, you know, I, I knew about the, I talked to Jeff, talked to the weight. So I didn't know what the technique was. Right? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so pretty straightforward there mm-hmm. in, you know, calories in calories out, um, kind of thing. So, um, okay. So, um, <laughs> you get motivated by the weight loss, right? The weight loss helps, right? Jeff, yeah. the challenge from Jeff, yeah. right? Um, so, so how does that proceed from, you know, you're, you're losing the weight, like when did you y'all were just riding around casually? Kind riding of around casually, but then the casual starts becoming faster because now we're fitter. The weight has come off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now yeah, you know yeah, yeah. where we were struggling to hit seventeen, like seventeen is nothing. So now we're challenging each other. You know, all mm-hmm. of a sudden Jeff is is sprinting or trying to break away from us. I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, uh-uh, come back here. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, now the speeds are pushing to to the high eighteens. Yeah. And um, we're starting to feel real good. Um, and I think. So if, if this started in May okay. of 20, is that 2020, May of yeah. 2020, sure. right around August, I'm saying, yo, let's, uh, let's go look at those Wolfpack guys again. Like, okay. I don't think we're going to get dropped now. Okay. You know, Jeff okay. was a little hesitant of it, but I was like, no, nah, I think we're going to be all right. Like we've, we've really improved. Like okay. something is different. So we went out for a ride with them, uh, one time out of four mile and like, it was completely different. Yeah. It's like we were able to keep with those guys. I was like, nice. this is awesome. Nice. And I think that brought us back in. I, okay. remember, I remember Chris saying, it's like, you know, you know, we're recruiting you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whatever, let's get it. Nice. Um, so you go out there, you do the four mile. How far do y'all, you know, recall how I far? I think y'all? four mile creek ride is uh, somewhere between 30 and 40 miles. Okay. Okay. Your rides around that time, are they, you know, like roughly like you're doing 20, 30, 40 miles? Like, yeah. Rides? Okay. Yeah. Um, so you start, so you start rolling with the roof pack. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and Chris Clark has, has pulled y'all, pulled y'all in. Um, when do you start, at some point, I assume you start setting some goals in your, your cycling. When do you start like, cause you're just, you're riding, you've gotten more motivated about riding. You clearly notice the difference cause there's, there's weight that's just not there. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, do you start like, I'm going to do X on the bike. I'm going to do Y on the bike. Like when, does, when does it become like you start setting some goals on the bike kind of thing? Because it sounds like you did. Well, I mean, the, the goals just kept 
evolving okay. over and over. But once I was able to ride with Chris and Mark yeah. Wolfpack, I was like, you know what? I remember Mark actually at the one ride, you know, I was thinking that Wolfpack was it. That's that's like the fastest yeah. you're going to get. And yeah. I remember Mark was complimenting me at the ride. I was like, you know, you're riding really good. You've improved a lot. You're like, yeah. maybe, you know, you could ride with the Spin Mafia crew. I'm like, who's who's Spin yeah. Mafia? It's yeah. like, well, they ride out, out here in Chesterfield mm-hmm. uh, on Saturdays. I'm like, I want to do that. It's like, well, they, they drop. And I'm like, I want to try it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I told him, like, you know, I want to be able to ride with anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that was my, that's my goal. Yeah. That's, that was my goal then is my goal now. I want yeah. to be able to go anywhere and ride with anybody. Just pop up to a ride and like. I can roll. I yeah. can roll. Okay. Um, uh, so you catch up with the Spin Mafia guys. You I do. Okay. Yeah, eventually I caught up with them one Saturday. I get out there and, um, you know. I think it's, it's cycling culture, so you know you get to ride nobody. Mm-hmm. They don't know you, so they they're not paying you any mind. Yeah, and you know, I, I think I was the only black guy there too. So it's like, all right, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, yeah, but uh, you get out there and, and you ride. I do my best to hold a wheel. Yeah, and um, they there's some sprint sections in there, and I I bust my sprints and yeah, I I stayed with the ride. Yeah, I get back and now, who are you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I can I can see that. So, so you do the spin mafia ride. You you mm, you're keeping up. Mm-hmm. Um, ride with anybody else. Um, and this is still this is still 2020. It's still it's, yeah. This so, is still 2020, still 2020. Yeah. Um, when did you do your first century? Outdoors? Oh, my first century. Oh, that was that's like right when I got my bike back in. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So okay, so you okay you you did one of those okay back then. Um, did you have you done another? Have you gone back to to, to check that out? And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Quickly but with the with the company, I remember we did it as a company with six six of us. Okay, we did a century, the cap to cap actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, I remember the first time I did the century was in sneakers and a t shirt, and I told myself I'd never do it again. It was painful. Yeah, it was a uh, my my church guys from my church that rode that yeah. convinced me to do it. And um, God, when I think back to it now, um, my friend Joe, he had me pulling the whole time. <laughs> and he's just behind me. He's like, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And I look back now, knowing what That's I know. Right. I'm like, yeah. yo, I pulled the whole time. Yeah. I was hurting. Yeah. But no, nah, centuries, I love them. I love I love doing centuries. It's, like, it's an adventure. Okay. All right. Um, so you're rolling with the wolf pack. Um, you, you start visiting other groups. You, did Spin Mafia, did you go like try to roll with other, other groups before you started traveling with the bike? You, before Were you trying to like meet with other groups? and, and really um, So with Spin Mafia, I did Spin Mafia a couple of times. And when after I, I did well there, they're talking to me and they're telling me about Deep Run and Crump Park. So I checked out mm. Deep mm. Run. And in my opinion, Deep Run is probably the spiciest ride we have in this area. <laughs> um, that t- The first time I went out there and did it was a 26 average. Yeah. And I, man, I was gassed. I mean, yeah. Didn't yeah. drop me, but still, yeah. it hurt. That's a lot. Um, but yeah, I did that, and um, that built my confidence. Um, and from there, I was like, I want to see more. Um, now I'm really indoctrinated in this Wolfpack, and um, I'm starting to take on more of a leadership role in, in Wolfpack, trying to revitalize it, because it kind of was dying out right. a little bit, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I wanted to find a way to get people to to be able to communicate and figure out what's going on. So we mm-hmm. had a WhatsApp at first and now mm-hmm. group read what we're right. using. Yep. You're aware of. Yep. Yep. But um, I was like, you know, I want to get the Wolfpack name out more. I want people to know of us. Yeah. If I have to be an ambassador and go out places to get dropped, so be right. it. Yeah. So um, I think the first time uh, I went out was with uh, Clarence. We went to Maryland to go ride with GII okay. in uh, October, I believe. I think it was right after, th- right after um, okay. Halloween. This must have been in 2020. Okay. It's still 2020. Okay. And um, that was a whole different experience because, you know, down here, we're riding in pace lines. Mm-hmm. Out there, they were riding in a Peloton. And they're okay. completely taking, yeah. over the, okay. taking over the road. I'm like, these guys don't care nothing about road yeah. rules or nothing. Like, I guess they own the road up here. Um, so it was different. It was just, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. Very overwhelming. But it was fun, none the okay. least. Um, okay. And I found myself splitting from... I, th- I took off with the B group because I wasn't sure if I would be able to do an A group. Okay. And I remember when the A group was coming by and I looked at Clarence. I was like, I'm going to go try. If anything, yeah. I'll just fall back with you guys. And yeah. I took off with them. And mm-hmm. that was fun. And um, 
I was able to hang with those guys and part one group that was in there was uh, the team I'm racing for now, which is Artemis Racing. Okay. Um, and when I was able to ride with them, yeah. you know, I earned their respect. I'm connected with Super Dave, which is like my big mentor now. And uh, he threw the invite out mm-hmm. say, hey, if you're ever back in the air, just reach out and yeah. um, you can ride with us. Okay. So, um, yeah, I rode. I went back up there another time to go do 124 miles, which didn't pan out because okay. uh, logistical errors ended up being 90, but it was still nice and spicy with a lot yeah. of elevation. Okay. And from that second ride is when I joined officially the group. Okay. And, uh, you know, they put the idea in my head that I guess I can pursue racing. Like, you know, okay. I've done the fast group rides now. That gets the next thing of progression would be to, to race. Racing. Okay. So that was my next target. Okay. And that was the end of 2020. So. Um, yeah. Cause I, uh, so, so, um, so you get in, you get some information about trying to do some racing. Do you just sign up for a race? Do you just like, what's a, what, how does that go? Cause I know you, I remember you being in Brian Park. Mm-hmm. So Brian Park was the, the first races. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I've okay. not, okay. not okay. done any races okay. bef- before that. So in my, I was asking Super Dave a lot, like what I should do. I was asking if I should sign up right now to get my license. Like, no, I would wait. Um, season's closing out, so you know it's December. Like, right, yeah. don't do nothing now. Just, just wait. We'll let you know. Um, so I ended up getting, you know, my license in April, end of April of twenty one, mm-hmm. and um, with the mindset of finding of doing races mm-hmm. at some point, um, I start pursuing the fast rides again the spin mafias and the mm-hmm. deep runs and uh, I told myself I'm gonna I need to go back up to Maryland and do more rides with those guys because mm-hmm. I feel like the rides up there are probably more race like and they're gonna condition me for races okay um, so I did a couple up there um, okay. and the last one I did up there which is the first week of May I got in a really bad accident and okay. I broke my collarbone Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So that was a setback. But that was that was on a ride. Like that was on a group. It. Was on a group okay. ride. But group rides up there are like races. They're okay. unsanctioned races. Okay. Um. So yeah, we it was the twenty three mile ride that day, and uh, right around mile twenty, a rider probably like four bikes ahead of me uh, mm-hmm. clipped somebody's wheel, lost mm-hmm. this front wheel, and it's just domino effect. Can't okay. avoid it. Um. So collarbone break. Say it again. Collarbone. Yeah, collarbone. Yeah. Um. How long is it recovered? The doctor was thinking six to eight weeks, but um, it was okay. probably about two. Really? <laughs> two, and then you were you were like spinning I, at home. I was spinning. I was spinning at home in less than two weeks, um, okay. and actually, <laughs> I think within days I was on a bike and I almost got killed by Tamara uh, because she saw me riding a bike, <laughs> which I videotaped yeah. with my sling on. Um, but I'm 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 stubborn. But <laughs> yeah, Could have it was, out. the doctor was like, yeah, six to eight weeks. But yeah, within two weeks, I'm, I'm pushing myself on the train. I was like, hey, is it okay if I get on the train? It's like, yeah, just don't sweat too much. I'm like, all right, I okay. won't sweat too much. But <laughs> I, uh, you know, right, right, you I pushed myself. And okay. um, I, yeah, within, within two weeks, I was back riding on the trainer. And okay. by June, I was back outside. Okay. Okay. Um, now that I brought that up, um, you, you had a trainer. When did you get a trainer? When did that when did that happen? Because that's a different level. I got that day. trainer right indoors. Uh winter of twenty twenty. And I remember mm-hmm. I got it because Chris had told me um that, that was a game changer for him. Mm-hmm. Um he says he he rode a trainer through the winter and he came back the next season and he was stronger. And I was mm-hmm. like, All right, I'll I'll try this out. No structure or anything, it's just riding yeah, just, and yeah, swift, right? Just and yeah. um yeah, I was like, yo, this training stuff is difficult. Like it feels completely mm-hmm. different than outside it, the resistance seems 10 times harder I'm extremely hot my butt hurts but whatever Chris said it's, it works I'm gonna do it yeah so I would do it so okay and you and you you notice the difference well at that point then I think the only difference is that I didn't lose my fitness it's probably the first time okay. that I did not lose my fitness okay so I was right. able to carry what I had the year before into oh, the next year right. so that was helpful okay yeah, yeah, I think that's 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 a that's a big game for people who ride in. If you do the indoor training, it can help bridge that gap. So then you'll have this long ramp up to get back up to, to speed when it starts getting the springtime. Exactly. Um, so riding a trainer, thought I asked about that. Um, 
and you're just like riding it, you're just like pedaling on the thing. You're just, or you're yeah, like, just pedal. I, I I would treat it like you know I'm doing a ride outside, like okay. just ride through the, the Zwift area. You know, okay. Sometimes you you know you get tagged on to other people riding. Okay. And um, I started picking up a little bit of the, the Zwift races like okay. towards the end, which extremely dope. I think the first one I did, I was like, why is this so hard? <laughs> like you know, right out the gate, I'm dropped. I'm like, what is going? Like I know I'm a decent rider. Yeah. And I can't keep up with this. I'm like, are these guys cheating? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I I sampled a little bit of everything in the beginning. Okay. But it was just mostly just to keep my legs spinning. Okay. All right. Um, and because I have an interest in Zwift racing, did you revisit the Zwift races, or did you did you go back and do any more? Yeah, I've I've done more actually. I did some this uh this past off season. Um, okay. Jumped to some Zwift races. I think I am uh B. Okay. Uh, nice. B level. Okay. Um, um, what three points? Three point seven watts per kilo. That is B. That is B. Three point yeah. two to. I think it's three point two to four. I think it's three point two to four. So right. yeah, that is B. Yeah, it's B. Yeah. Um, nice. So yeah, I've done. I think I've done three this year. Um, it's, um, so you're when you're doing the race at this point, I'm guessing you know you need to be going like pretty fast in the beginning. at the start. Yeah. You, yeah. Before the, the gate. Yeah. Goes so in. before okay. I even okay. join the race, like I'll go. I'll look at you know Zwift Companion and find the race time that I want to do. Yeah. And then prior, like thirty minutes prior to that, I'll go find some random ride in Zwift and I just get my legs warmed up. Okay. okay. And probably within a minute before the race, I'm in there and I'm just... Okay, that's I'm how you... Okay. I'm okay. spinning. Okay. I'm, I'm ready. I'm just looking for that countdown to go and like you just spike your watts. Well, you know, if I got to take it up to 600, yeah. I'll do that. But I just need to be in that front group and then kind of tailor it back down just okay. like I said on the wheel. Okay. All right. Cool. You got that. Yeah. The rest of you can figure out. <laughs> yeah. so if you don't come out the gate hot, you're not going to be able to keep up at all. You're not. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, you did some 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 riding indoors, uh, helped bridge that gap, uh, and it certainly helped when you got your injury um, to be able to kind of ride indoors, right? Keep, keep the keep the legs moving. Um, cool. Um, um, why do you keep riding? Why do you keep doing this? Oh man, yeah, it's a broad question. It's riding is riding is fun. It's like being a child again. Okay. You know, when when you're a kid, like you're, you don't have worries. You're just looking to have fun and enjoy life. It's simple things. Okay. And riding brings that back. Okay. You know, I don't care if you're a doctor. Yeah. If you're a CEO of a company, or an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. Yeah. We're all here riding, having fun, going on adventures. It's fun. It's it's therapeutic. It it brings down your stress. It's good for your health. Like I can't find any bad in riding. I thoroughly enjoy it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, good, good. Um, uh, and I'm going to get back to the arguments in, in a moment. Um, is you immediately start using the, when did you start using the bike computer? When you start like tracking the rides? Oh, you were man. seeing your speeds early on. So when, when did that? No, happen? it took me a minute to get a bike computer. I'm, I'm real cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Those first robber rides, I, I wasn't using any computer. I was, okay. I was filling it out. And, okay. uh, I remember one time okay. I went to the, the robber ride and it was my turn to take a pull and I surged um, and I can't remember the guy's name but he's like hey he's like, chill out yeah. simmer down <laughs> I'm like, it's like try to hold this and I'm thinking to myself how do I know to hold that because I don't have a yeah. speedometer um, but uh, it was Jeff 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 convinced me to, mm-hmm. to, um, to get a computer actually the first computer I got was my Garmin watch okay um, and I would like you can strap I, would, it to the- I could strap it to the, to the handlebar but yeah. I would wear it on my, my wrist and check it okay <laughs> oh I'm going this fast but I use that to track my yeah. metrics. Other than you know, I didn't want to mount my phone onto my handlebars. I always thought I was like, no offense to anybody, but dorky. <laughs> it does not look as cool as it could possibly look. You're right. right. Yes, uh, but they have very good mounts for it, though. They do. Um, okay, so um, you're not just using that go- the the watch though. No, yeah. now I have a. Uh, I don't know what what number it is, but I do have a Garmin. Okay, you have okay, you yeah. have a bike computer. Okay. So I, I do I use speed, cadence, heart rate, and power. Now power. I just got into power this January. Oh, really? Which another game changer yeah. for structure training. It's like, oh my God, I know where I'm at. Um what power did you get? Um I bought it used, but it's a quarks. Ah, okay. Um uh, crank? Maybe? Yeah, crank okay. race. Cool, cool. Okay. Um so once you got a power meter like what's something like you 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 notice? I'm mean, clearly you start seeing your your watch. Like what's something you were like? I was just like I didn't 
I didn't even think about this. Like, because you're, you're well, I mean, that's a, that's you, a different real. It's a lot of data that can come in. You know, you know your watts. You know your watts while you're in Zwift. So I've always been aware of what watts are, but mm-hmm. like, I'm not paying attention to it. It's just, yeah. it's just there for me. Yeah. Um. It was a, a racer here in this area named John Eiler that ra- races mm-hmm. for Cutaway. Okay. Um. That told me to get a power meter. He's like, his analogy was like when you go to the gym. Like, how do you know what you mm-hmm. you can lift? Mm-hmm. You know, like you can go to you go to the squat rack, like yeah, you know what you have a frame of reference of what you can squat, right? Yeah. If I tell you to go squat 100 pounds, you probably be like, okay, I could do that. Yeah. But yeah. if I tell you to go squat 700 pounds, you, <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing with the power right. meter. So right. you could look down at your power meter and you're like, right. I'm putting out 100 watts. Uh, that's that's cool. Yeah. You look back. Oh, I'm putting out 600 watts. Hey, I might need to change something up real quick. Or yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get pop. Yeah. I was like, that's a good analogy. So okay. once he made that that clear for me is like mm-hmm. yeah i'm gonna use that now now I look at it and like i'm not watching it constantly while i'm riding yeah but uh i'll peek it like if i feel uncomfortable i look down I'm like oh yeah I'm my watts are too hot i need to change something i gotta find a wheel i gotta get out the wind something i gotta calm down and yeah relax this thing not too much okay all right cool all right um not that I'm, i assumed you were using it um i will say um the balance was something that when i started using the power meter um, uh, like the pedaling dynamic stuff, the um, like how much one leg is pedaling mm-hmm. versus the other, and then uh, some of them will also tell you where your foot is on the pedal itself. Like if you're too much, if you're putting down more on the right side of the pedal, oh, wow. to, yeah, like some will, you know, the pedaling dynamics will get to that point of like detecting like how far, like you're putting out like was it sixty percent on the right leg and forty mm-hmm. on the left, and then like how much you're your, your foot is like on the pedal on the right side of the pedal as opposed to the left side of the pedal. Like someone can even detect that. I didn't know it could do that. Okay. Um, where you're at in your pedal stroke, they can pick up um, like where you put down the most power in your pedal stroke. Like they'll tell you like at what what the angles are in the 360 degree, like where you put down the most power in your pedal stroke. Um, and it will also show you like, so I could see like my right leg is putting out more power over a larger arc than the left one is putting down. Like okay. It's a, le- a smaller window for my left leg that it puts down the most power. Anyway, nerdy stuff, but I was wondering. No, that's interesting. Yeah. No, I, I yeah. haven't dove that deep yeah. into it. Um, but it, yeah, even even seeing that, like, it's so many, like, even with our bike, because they can record so much stuff, but we may not use it. You're right. You know, we, right. We, right. we're looking for our watts. Let me know how many watts I put down. <laughs> um, so you got a bike computer, you got the heart rate monitor. That's, well, do you have a speed sensor? Or do you use a Garmin to, to the Garmin does a speed. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, cadence. Cadence sensor. Um, well, which is built in now with the power, power meter. So. Oh, oh, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, which is great. Um, do you still have your cadence sensor on the bike though? No. Okay, you took it off. I I, I did have one, but no, I took it off. Okay, okay. Thought which I didn't do. Budget. I had a I had power meter, and then took me it took me a full year of having a power meter before I was like. I have cadence in the pedals. Like this is a couple grams I don't need on the bike anymore. <laughs> um, and took it off. Um, it's like sitting on my fireplace right now. Um, uh, okay, so we we've skipped around here. So you get with Artemis. Um, you decide to do some races, mm-hmm. right? You decide you should get some races. You think about getting a racing license. You wait a little bit to get that racing license. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what's the what's the thought of like? Okay, let me do Brian Park. Like how does that? So when I got wind of Brian Park, like, okay, this is a training series right here mm-hmm. in the area. Like, this is perfect for me yeah. to try. I just got, just wrapping up with my, my injury. Like, why not try this? I don't want to jump head first into traveling else, elsewhere. So I thought it was just the perfect time to try. I remember uh, talking to one of the older uh, Wolfpack guys, uh, Elvin, mm-hmm. and um, I was telling him I was going to do it. And he's like, oh, yeah. You're you're gonna get dropped. <laughs> I'm like, no, man, I'm not gonna get dropped my first ride. He's like, yeah, you, okay, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's like, yeah, you should do it. But you're gonna get dropped, and it's yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. And I went out there the, the first time, and mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I did. It wasn't yeah. till like the end. I think like last three laps, but like yeah. I was popped. I yeah, I was astonished with how fast that was. And I've been in some fast group rides, but like mm-hmm. this was. It's not that it was it's fast. Like speed is one thing. It's it's the surging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, being especially being a larger rider, those mm-hmm. surges are burning matches. <laughs> They're killing you. <laughs> and I just was not um, accustomed to that. Like yeah. I, you know, I can go fast. I can hold my speed. I can hold a wheel. 
but you get me to surge like that, I was like, this is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, I got popped off uh, that first one, and it was I kind of I was I was real deflated when you know the refs are telling me go yeah, ahead step and, off, go yeah. ahead and pull off. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> but did they did they? No one told you that before you went. <laughs> what? The, um, that um, if you're not in the front group, I think it's if you're not in the front group. No, by the time you get to the last yeah. two laps, like you gotta, you gotta pull off. Yeah, I, I knew that. Okay, but okay. like it's, 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 it's still, it's still yeah. sucks. I'm yeah. like, oh man, it's like man, I can't believe. But it's okay. Like you know, you lick your wounds and you're mo- you're motivated, you're inspired to to do better. So okay. I'm back out there again, and it never happened again. Okay, and Kept I up. think yeah, I don't know how many Brian Parks I've. I want to say about five of them I did. Okay, um, but it, I got better and better each okay. one. Um, you placed in one of them. Yeah, one of them I came second. Nice. Um, yeah, that was the one that I was there. Because I remember the guy talking. He was like, yeah, you, you placed, man. Um, how did it feel? You got a podium. I mean, it's still a local training race. Did you even think about it? It was just like, I survived the race. I'm good. Like, how did it feel? I mean, I, I guess it felt good. But I, I wasn't, like, too stoked. One, because I was in pain. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> all, those, all those races hurt. I think... Every ride from then until January this year mm-hmm. have been extremely painful to me. Really? You know, yes, I'm able to, to ride those fast rides, but I wasn't, I guess more, I guess I'm more stubborn than okay. anything else to not quit, but okay. they hurt really bad. Okay. But now I feel like my fitness level is at a place where I'm, I'm riding and rides and I'm not hurting. Okay. I'm able to think clearly and negotiate my way through the ride, but no, nah, it hurt. So I didn't really, I was happy to get second, see that progression, okay. but I wasn't like, oh my God, no. Okay, okay, all right. Congratulations. Thank you. Me, you know? um, yes, I also got dropped my first one. In fact, my first ride was um, last last year. The, the first race was last year, and it was after the donut ride. So I did the first one. I did the first Bryant Park race, and I should not have ridden with y'all because um, <laughs> I was doing the donut ride. I actually showed up to the donut ride for Rabba, Ended up leading the B plus group for for Rabba, and there was only two other guys there because there was no one else to lead it. And then somehow I lost the two guys I was riding with, and then I started riding along and I caught up with the Wolfpack, and I was like, "Did y'all see two two older guys ride past?" <laughs> I was like, "No, we didn't see them." So I rode with y'all, um, which y'all were not doing a chill pace. Um, uh, I think I caught y'all like right before y'all crossed Parham Road on the donut ride, and then rode with y'all the rest of the way back. Um, which, you know, there were sprints and whatnot, right? And that was way too hard because I was expecting it to be a chill ride on the Monday to then go do the Bryant Park race the next day. But I went way too hard. And then, so I don't know if the Brian, my Bryant Park showing was, you know, I just got crushed or like I just didn't have full capacity. You probably didn't have full capacity. But, you, you know, you should, you should do it again. It's real likely. It's real likely I will show up again this season. It's it's real. It's I highly really I highly encourage it. I I encourage any cyclist that is fit, or I mean, I, I encourage every cyclist to to try it, even if you're not looking to be p- reaching podiums or anything. Yeah, I think there's a lot of experience to be gained from it, mm-hmm. and the more you learn at that level, the better it makes your cycling mm-hmm. on the road. Yeah, it makes you more pleasant to ride with and. You just improve cycling all the, all together, and it's it's good to see people try. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree. Right, have people try new things, experience new things, um, and improve bike handling skills of everyone would yes. be great. Um, so yes, there's a is again it's a strong possibility, is real likely that I will be out there. My license doesn't expire until June, so I don't have to renew it before I actually have to start. Okay, writing. yeah, I think the first race is what yeah. May seventeenth. Yeah, it's yeah. May seventeenth or something like that. So, I got time. Though. I got All time. Right. Um, Brian Park Racing. You uh, feel motivated. You go out there. You do more than several of those. Um, when you start, you've done some other races. You haven't just done Brian Park, though. Yeah, so this this year, when was my first race? It was Tidewater. Okay. This year, it was the first time my official, first official race. Okay, okay. It was Tidewater, and um, that's a road race. Um. So I've done four races so far okay. this year, okay. and um, thankfully a podium all four of them. Nice. Uh, Tidewater is the first 
first race I did, and I came first place in that one. And I was not expecting to place at all. I was almost ready to pull out of it because I just thought the riders were riding really sketchy. There was a really big wreck, like, within a mile okay. of the start. Um, when we came back around for the second lap, I think each lap was like a, a nine and a half miles. Like okay. I was still laid out, so they had to neutral the lap and okay. stop us until they can pull them off. So I, my mind wasn't in it. Um, right, yeah. But um, as we started rolling towards that, that last lap, I felt comfortable. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, it's like I'm in race mode. Yeah. So, you know, I start finding position in wheels and come around that, that corner. I think I'm like fifth man. Mm-hmm. And the guy up front is just taking a really long pull. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why are you doing this? But okay. Yeah. Right. So he's pulling hard and he, he pops himself off. And then I was four of us. And I'm like, this is good. And like every guy, everybody's like picking up the pace like this yeah. is a lead out yeah you know no, they're not in the team they're all independents yeah they're leading out and uh there's a little bit of space on the right and i said just gonna go for it yeah and i bust bust up in my sprint and took the win i was surprised myself that i took it but it, it happened <laughs> so that's a win how did that one feel Were that just... felt great okay <laughs> <laughs> I was I was shocked. Like I said, I, I wasn't ex- I wasn't expecting to podium. I didn't want to race. I thought I was gonna pull out the race, yeah, yeah. and then to turn around with that outcome is like wow. That's amazing. That's I, awesome. I can't believe, and it was very fulfilling as well to see the training because I, I just started doing my structure training mm-hmm. and changing my fitness. So like you know, normally a ride like that, race like that, I'd be gassed, but like yeah. I felt comfortable besides the, the sketchy stuff. Yeah, right. Fitness wise, yeah, I felt yeah. very comfortable. Good. I was just really pleased with it. Okay. Nice. Um were you in you were just like in the pack the, the most of the ride? Like Yeah, I was pack? hiding in the pack. Okay. Yeah, I was okay. sheltering myself. I'm a big guy. I'm not I'm not gonna say I do more work than I have to. Okay. Yeah. That's the thing you have to think of. Um how tall are you? Six foot. Yeah, yeah. You're you're the, the slipstream that applies to six and over is is not as not as large as someone who's like five feet tall. Right, or right. You know. Um, uh, so you do this race. Had you already signed up for the addition of other races, or were you like, I did this one and like. No, I just did the one, I'm, and I'm I'm done. I think there was another one after that. Okay. Um, at William and Mary, I believe. But I was okay, like, I'm done. Um, also, you know, I have to try to balance out with the the wife and kids. So I can't, I, I would love to race every weekend, but I cannot. So, <laughs> um, uh, early on in, in my learning about cycling, um, I watched a lot of videos of GCN, mm-hmm. um, and they went and interviewed, um, they were interviewing professional cyclists. I don't think it was one of the Tour de France, but it was like one of these other big rides or something like that. And they asked them about, um, the things that they enjoyed and didn't enjoy. And, and I think many of them said the thing they didn't enjoy is the time away from family, you know, having to do all those rides and not being able to be with family all the time because they had to travel all the time. Right. So yes, balancing life with, with the, the desire to race uh, makes sense. Uh, Cause you don't want to come back and your wife is mad. About no, no, no. And she's, she's often mad at me cause I, I <laughs> ride a lot. And then also in my job now it requires me to travel. So, and then I find excuses to ride while I'm traveling. So I ride a lot. Okay. Um, so it's mostly, I guess, guilt in me mm-hmm. and also her, her uh, getting on me. Do I try to find time and balance it out with her and the, and the kids? But uh, if I could choose, I'd be out riding every day. <laughs> every, every day. I, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm obsessed with this stuff. I love to ride. Um, it feels good, man. You're, 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 uh, you start doing it. The endorphins start kicking in. Like I should be doing this. I should do more of this. Like, so I, I understand. (laughs) I understand. You get on the bike and it just feels good. Right. So, so that part, I understand. Um, (laughs) um, uh, so you, so you did that Artemis race. Wait, that's the one? You did Williamsburg. I didn't do Williamsburg. I did Tidewater. Tidewater. I did okay. that. Yeah, I did that under Artemis. I was the only one from Artemis in okay. that in that particular race. At, at cap cap five. Actually, okay. I think I was cap four that race. Yeah, I was cap cap four. I'm still cap four. Um, the next race was uh, Langley Speedway. Okay. Um, came third in that. Okay. Uh, also was caught up in a wreck in that, but luckily it wasn't no breaks, just okay. an abrasion on my butt and okay. uh, my elbows. Okay. 
lost my front brake in it and I was upset when it, when it happened. I, it was a silly wreck. Yeah. Um, the guy that was in the inside, I don't know if he lost his balance, you know, when he hit the divot in the, in the inside, but he pretty much came outside on this banking and yeah. took everybody out. And it's just unavo- unavoidable for everybody that got in a wreck. Um, okay. But I thought they were going to, I lost my opportunity to, to yeah. do anything, but they allowed me to, to regroup keep, keep, and okay. then take my free lap and uh, we restart it. Nice. And uh, I think it was like five laps again. I think we had two laps when the, when the wreck happened. Okay. And then they restarted to five laps. And I was able to to, to bring out the third. Okay. And I, I'll chop that one up to bad timing. Timing my sprint. Okay. But I'm happy with the third place nonetheless. This place is still awesome. Um, how large is the field? Of that was a full field. So okay. it had to be like, what, 70, 75 oh, cyclists? Yeah, yeah. Clearly third. Like if it was four riders in third place, like it's different. But 70 riders in third place, that's still great. <laughs> math um um so you're still racing um and uh different question how old are kids how old are my kids yeah um i have three and my daughter nyla is nine years old okay and hector is five and howie is four four kids four three kids three kids three kids did i do that did i do that i did that okay all right sorry three kids okay now give me, yeah, no give me more. more. Okay, sorry. No, no, no more oh. kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, uh, well, I guess they they sound a bit young. Do they have they are they at various stages of biking themselves? Uh, um, I've designer? taken. Oh man, um, my daughter does not like physical activity. Um, mm. Okay. But I force her to do things with me anyways. I've mm-hmm. taken her on the Capitol Trail. Okay. She's done her. I actually had my mom buy her a nice single speed bike. Okay. Um, and we've been on the Capitol Trail once. But she, if you don't make her, she's yeah. not doing it. Now, my other two, mm-hmm. they they love physical activity, especially my middle, Hector. He, yeah. I swear he's like a carbon copy of me. Yeah. And I remember taking him to Pocahontas on, on a, at three years old, he's doing single trail. I'm like... Yeah. He's ripping it. Yeah. Like I'm looking at this guy go through and like taking these 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 bankings. I'm like, this dude's gonna gonna wreck, but he doesn't wreck. He loves nice. it. And then his little brother Howie, he just likes to follow him. So mm-hmm. whatever Hector does, he's gonna do too. Um, Howie doesn't know. He has not. He can balance very well. He has a balance bike. Okay. But he he has not put the two and two together, pedaling and balancing. So mm, okay. He I'm still working on him to to ride, but um, once he's Full of gold, love to take the two of them to Did Pocahontas right, okay. and just let them rip at it. Nice, nice. Um, and you're taking them on the gravel bike or the mountain no, bike? No, I have a mountain bike mountain as well. Bike. Okay. Yeah. When did the mountain bike happen? Mountain, mountain bike. bike came before. Was it before or after? No, it was after I got the Specialized. Um, same GM. Okay. His bike as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he had purchased this uh, Trek Superfly okay. um, used, and um, he kept talking it up. And it was funny for funny because we would always joke that he's he's flying like man, you're super fly. He's like Andre, guess what bike I found? I found a Trek Superfly. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like what are the odds? And he's like, you know, eventually he's talking me up at how I should get it because he he has multiple bikes. Oh my yeah. god! And like yeah. he would have me ride that bike while he's riding this nice carbon bike he built up yeah um to go to pocahontas mm-hmm. and then you know manipulation he just, you know the, the bugs there i'm like mike how, how i get this bike off of you so um okay. i got i got that okay um how you feel about mountain biking how you feel about the offer of man you know at first it was mountain biking which i enjoyed more than than road biking okay i thought it was way more thrilling and exciting you know the yeah. you know chance of getting hit by a tree yeah road which i have hit and I've, yeah. I've hit many trees and it hurts really bad. It's pr- luckily, I didn't break anything doing so. But uh, it was the hitting the trees that mm-hmm. that's like okay, maybe, maybe not so much because you know yes, it's fun. It's still fun to me. Yeah. But um, my skill level, I think I'm a pretty decent mountain biker. Okay. But when I push myself, I think I push myself faster than my skill can handle. So ah. I put myself in, ah, in precarious okay. situations. Okay. Um, and I don't. I don't think it's worth it. Um, okay. So I'd ra- I think riding on the road is safer, in my opinion. I feel it is as well. 
I feel that riding on the road is a safer, safer thing to do. Um, if you're just thinking about the terrain, right, right, um, there's less chance of getting hit by a car on a mountain bike trail. That's true. Um, and th- that's a, that's a part where it's like, yeah, I'd rather like hit a tree branch on a mountain bike trail than get hit by a car, you know? <laughs> um, so either way, yes, I feel the safer, um, on the road. So they're smooth in most cases. Um, so, okay. All right. So cool. You've got a mountain bike. Do you, um, the gravel bike somebody else has right now? Yeah. Somebody else has. Okay. Um, all right. Um, have you, when's the last time you won a mountain bike? Um, uh, Monster Cross. Oh, you did Monster Cross? I did. That's my first time I did this year. Okay. On the mountain bike. Yeah. Uh, had you, had you done that? This, did you wait? What distance did you do? I did uh, the the mini monster, which is twenty five miles. The, okay, okay. Yeah, that's the first time I've ridden that far. Really on, on a mountain, mountain bike. bike? Yeah. How'd you feel after twenty five? Um, I was I felt good actually. Okay. I felt good. Um, I was it was a good milestone for me. Um, okay. One the distance and also the speed. I've never gone that fast. Okay. Um, nice. Off off road, so it was it was quite exciting. The first part of it was like really intense. Like I remember that uh, that Gator was supposed to. Give mm-hmm. us a neutral, but that Joker was cooking. Yeah, and everybody's just chasing it. I remember seeing Micah going up there, like he's like right on that that Gator's wheel. Jessica Conley's up there. I'm like, Yo, yeah, what is going on? Yeah, I probably like three miles in. I'm I'm gas. I'm like, you know, if I keep up with this, mm-hmm. keep this pace, I'm gonna die. So I need to just tailor it back a little bit. But okay. it was fun. It was good having all those people there, mm-hmm. and it's surprising to see like. Riding at that speed off road, like yeah, I felt like yeah. those mountain bikers have way better bike control than <laughs> than the road riders do. You know, we freak out when we see little potholes and twigs. Right. Well, that's because they got full suspension and wider tires. Like yeah, it's true. definitely um, there's actually more maneuverability, which I just saw like this week because of the dimensions of the bike. You have a different level of maneuverability because of how the handlebars are and the, the dimensions of the bike. Um, but that doesn't say they're not just skilled on their own. True. Um, um, have you done, so you've done some races. Have you done like cycling events, charitable, charitable cycling events, that kind of thing? You yeah, no, this, this is one I've right, done was the uh, yep. um, Midnight. That was a really nice one that we That's did. Right, yeah, because you were a tournament. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, y'all were cooking there. Somehow it was supposed to be, somebody said some speed. Me. <laughs> that they were going to come out the gate and then like somehow we were 25 miles an hour or something like that coming yeah. out of there. So like, they, the, I came in and I told the group, you know, the intent was we we're going to, I think we we're going to try to keep it, keep it together, like maybe a 19, <laughs> 20, 20 average. Um, Micah was out there that day and Micah does not like going slow. And we also had a brother that, that just moved down here, Lorenzo. Mm-hmm. And you know he just wanted to ride with us, and I was telling yeah. Lorenzo like, "Yeah, we're gonna keep it nice together." Yeah. And I'm telling Micah, "Yeah, we're gonna keep it nice together." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> and we take off, and Micah's gone. And all of a sudden, I see Lorenzo gone after Micah. But I'm like, "I thought Lorenzo was gonna ride with us." So I'm like, "Oh God, yeah. I gotta go after those guys." So I'm yeah. trying to pull some of my guys yeah. up there, but then I'm, <laughs> I'm popping my guys off. And now I'm up here with Lorenzo and Micah. And Micah's like, yeah, this is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but we dropped everybody else. Well, I'm here now, so let's, let's yeah, keep let's it keep going. going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's how I ended up riding with Jeff. Jeff fell off. <laughs> Jeff fell off the back. Um, and I also, he fell off the back eventually. And I'd already fallen off the group because somebody tried to almost made a wrong turn. Um, and then me, me and Jeff did the, the rest of that ride uh, together. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, it's hard to, I've done that ride several times. And when you come out of that parking lot onto the main road, mm-hmm. there are, you know, there are guys that are going pretty quickly and you can see them. It's not like, oh, they took a turn and you don't see them anymore. No. So you can't gauge how, but the road's straight. So I think that keeps us motivated. Oh man, I can see them still They're right there. Moving. So. Yeah. I had to keep up with them. Um, you can do the ride again. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if I'm, if I'm here, I'm definitely doing it. And okay. I, I, I love group rides all together. Um, I definitely encourage it. Um, One Love in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite ones. Oh, my God. So many cyclists from... Oh, it's great. Yeah. I saw Century, and I think the elevation is like almost almost 6,000 for, for a century. It's pretty it's pretty terrible. intense. Um, and I went out there with the front group with that one. And um, mm-hmm. I, we, 
I got popped around 80 miles, and I still came back with an over 21 average really? on, on, on that. Um, and then you got Seagull as well. Mm-hmm. That's an, another one. All, the, all yeah. these, these group rides I'm telling you, by the way, I always try to – I challenge myself to go up the front group. I don't okay. care if I get popped. I'm going up the front group. I'm going to try to go out with them. So, okay. I did well with Seagull. I made it to 85 miles and then got popped. Okay. <laughs> but, That's you know, four hour and six minute century, I'm happy with it. That's solid, man. Um, and then it. I think one of my favorite rides was uh, a ride down in um, South Florida. The okay. Level Up Cycling group that had Ride With The Pros where Rasan Bahati and Justin Williams were down there uh, to do like a 50-ish mile, okay. mile route. And that was, it was just awesome to see all these people come together in tropical yeah. South Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, to ride with these guys, and they're as humble as can be, cool guys. Like, come ride with us. Okay, nice. Um, it is very cool to ride with the different groups, and then because I'm um, not not that we get used to the people we're with, but it's cool to go somewhere else and ride with another group, and then I won't say fit in, but like you can ride with that, you can hold with that group. They understand. Like, there's mm-hmm. times you you don't say it, you don't have to say something. Like, you just under you communicate with the group because y'all have done this. You. Connecting with with strangers, I right? Know. And I mean, it all goes boils back to like we're all doing this for fun. Mm-hmm. Like this is fun. We're we're all enthusiasts in this cycling thing. So the yeah. common thing here is that we like riding our bikes. Mm-hmm. Now there's different levels of that we're riding at, but at sure. the end of the day, we love riding our bikes. So bikes. So um, it's easy to connect with with somebody riding a bike because we're doing right. what we doing enjoy. You enjoy. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just a right matter of where, where you fit in with that group. But, okay. you know, whether it's a, a group of a slower pace or a faster pace, you're going to fit in. Okay. Um, do you still do casual rides? Or are they all fast now? No, no, no. I, I do casual rides okay. as well. I do, okay. I'm, I'm perfectly fine, you know, chilling out, you know, and my legs thank me for it as well. So, okay. yeah, I'll do, I'll do the casual rides here and there. Um. So we, we talked about a couple cycling events, and I like to ask, like, what's something, when you do these events, right, and there's rest stops, what's something you'd like to see at the rest stops? Like, what's something you would, Oof. hopefully you bring your own supplies, but, like, what's something you'd like to see at the rest stops? So I'm, I'm really bad with nutrition on the bike. Um, I, I tend, I've been tending to, to bonk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because I ride it, I feel good. I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> I'm not even looking at what's at the rest stop. I'm just gonna keep it cooking. And then you know, miles later, I'm like, oh man, I feel sick. Like, why am I on this bike? Yeah. Um. So I need to do better with that. Um. Oh man. So so ask me what I would like to see on the rest stop. Yeah. I don't know. Cause I'm still you're, experimenting. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're <laughs> I can tell you what I carry. Um. Yeah. Let's go with that. Um. Yeah. Normally, uh, if I can get my hands on it, because I go through a guide to order infinite. Okay. Um, because I don't want to. I'm cheap again. Yeah, I don't want to pay pay yeah. the full shipping cost, so I, I buy through one Somebody of the else. infinite yeah. ambassadors that I know of, and um, I'll put infinite in my two water bottles. Okay. And that holds me pretty well. And I also supplement that with a gel. It could be Goo brand Goo, um, Cliff Bar, mm-hmm. or right now because I shop through Molly's, I use the uh, Honey Stingers. Okay. Their mm-hmm. gel. Um, and that's roughly it. Okay. I'm real simple with it. It's okay. just at the end of the day for me, it's like just just throw something in your mouth. You yeah, know? just yeah. keep throwing yeah. things in your mouth, um, yeah. and mm-hmm. you, you'll be okay. I guess preferentially, um, I would say like having something hot. Like I say, you're doing a century. If you yeah. if you could stop and enjoy something hot, that like kind of okay brings you. It, it kind of brings you back, you know. Okay. Um. It, this is not not what you're talking about, but it, it this comes to mind. And it's hot shots, hot shots. They're like, I think it's like a a caffeine drink. Um, oh, that would be shots. great. I love caffeine. Uh, hot shots, uh, cycling drink. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna mess that all up. But um, hot shot uh, for muscle soreness. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, these these, but they're like spicy. But they're like you take a little shot of these things, mm-hmm. and I don't show you later but either way um and so that's i got a friend of mine who will have those sometimes and take them and then it's like oh wow i'm I'm alert like i just got a boost of some real concentrated (laughs) caffeine and like a cap full or something like that but when you mentioned hot i was like oh yeah i I know what's up Mm -hmm. either way um so your nutrition so you don't not not much upsets you then like you're no 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 i can eat anything i'm like a billy goat okay um uh well that's great 
uh, that you can, you can, yes, you should be eating while you ride. Yeah. There's, a, there's some kind of not quite formula, but every so often you eventually figure out like I should be eating like every 45 minutes or something, mm. you know, kind of thing. Cause yeah, we don't want you bonking. I like to tell myself now, like like roughly every ten miles, I need to put something in my mouth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, it covers your snacks. Um, you're on Strava. Yeah. When did you start using Strava? Um, right away, actually. Um, okay. I don't. I think I stumbled upon it. Like okay. I didn't have no groups or anything. I was trying to find ways to like track because I didn't have the computer or anything. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to know how far I was going. Um. So I found there was another app I had on um, on the iPhone mm-hmm. that I was using, and then I found Strava. I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Okay. So I was using that to track how far I was going. Okay. But then started realizing that that's what everybody uses. So I was like, "This is cool." Yeah, I think there was uh, is it Cycle Meter? There was like some other apps prior to Strava, um, but but they weren't social, and I think that's how Strava excelled. Like Strava's right. You know, the Facebook for, for physical activity. Yeah, and I like that because it allows you to connect. Like, mm-hmm. I've been able to connect with cyclists from, from all over. Like, I, you know, I'll go to Maryland, Georgia, or even in Cali. And, like, I think part of it is also Instagram and Facebook. But, like, people recognize you and right. I've not met them. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen your Strava. I've seen that. Like, all yeah. right. Cool. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah. It is nice to... to and I've seen... Um, Every so often, you know, you'll see somebody do does a cool, a cool ride. And like, oh, I didn't even know there was a route. Like, you could take right. you there and or you something could, like that. you could copy the route. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great tool, especially um, for the routes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you started cycling in the pandemic, or at least started hard cycling in the, the pandemic. So mm-hmm. I can't ask you, or I can't ask you, like, how did that impact, you know, things? Like, did you do stuff different, like, once you, like, when in the, the pandemic was, was hitting and, and you were cycling? Did you... I just Operation. I would say with the pandemic just brought more serious to seriousness to the sport and okay. just opened my eyes. Just the frequency of of the rise uh, changed. Okay. It's like it went from I would say before the pandemic, like when I would ride, like I was happy with like two to three rides a week. Okay, but then you you start riding more in the pandemic, and like now you start craving it. Like right. Right. I don't get on this bike. Like so, like why am I so moody today? Yeah, I didn't ride. Oh okay, I yeah, go, go ride the bike. <laughs> Seriously, it's a problem. Um, and it's, it's interesting. When does that, when does that happen? Like, when does that happen for us that it goes from like, we're just riding the bike. Like, cause you know, prior to the cycling life, you didn't think about like, I need to have a, a bike ride to right. feel better. But like now, I don't, like, I don't know when that switch happened. I guess you get so accustomed to like pushing yourself. Like yeah. your body starts craving this, this thing. Mm-hmm. And like, you, you, it's serious. I can literally start feeling depressed if I yeah. don't ride my bike. bike ride. Yeah. You know? I was just uh, um, down in North Carolina with my wife and kids, and the wife was like, are you going to ride your bike every day? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I did it purpose, I didn't ride my bike, and I was like, I was sad. I really wanted to ride my bike. Man. Oh, um, I'm, I am uh, I'm glad that you found some, there's been some communication uh, and some accommodation for you to, to ride mm-hmm. in, the, in the family and stuff like that. That is important. Um, cause you know, you look, communication is important. Just, just go with that. Um, what's, uh, what's your earliest memory of riding on a bike? It doesn't I, have to be the, you know, like the earliest, but like, what's an early memory of, of you with the bicycle? Kind of thing? Oh man. Um, uh growing up in miami and like you know like i said earlier you know we as kids we would use the bike as ways of tr- transporting ourselves around and you know you go around the neighborhood and you you find a house that has all the bikes parked out front and that's where all your friends are at but um we, we'd go on adventures like i remember we would like say we're gonna go on an adventure and build a clubhouse and like the area was was developing so you have these developments that are being constructed and to us that like Oh, this is like forest area. Like, so we'd like ride through these areas and like find the the man-made lakes and like go camp out and take the building materials Mm -hmm. uh, that they're using to construct these houses and try Mm -hmm. to build our own clubhouses and whatnot. And we thought we were doing amazing stuff, you know, riding two, three miles from the house. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of my fondest memories. 
Um, that's a that's a that's a, a long distance as, as a young kid. It's a far way to be away from. Oh, that was that was fun. <laughs> we weren't supposed to go that far. I don't tell my mom, but <laughs> we left now. we left the gated community, so we were gone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's too late now. Um, what's next, man? Like, what's 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 next on the thing? Like, what is? Are you got events planned? You got goals set up? Like, what's what's next for you, man? Um, with, with your well, it, adventure, if anything. Oh, it's, it's a it's a lot, I guess. Um, for me right now, you know, I'm trying to head up this 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 Wolfpack group okay. with uh, with Tamara, See that. and um, my whole thing is to continue to build and encourage encourage mm-hmm. these these cyclists to be better cyclists, yeah, and to expose them to, I guess, the the different etiquettes of of cycling. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that I'm racing, I can give them even more knowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, affect the training while we're doing the, you know, group rides on Saturdays, or you know, we go to West Creek and we could work some pace line stuff. Um, I could probably start throwing in like some quick crit training, like how to handle your bike in a parking lot with them. Um, mm-hmm. And then you know, we we hold events uh, every year. We just started last year, but we're gonna hold yeah. events every year. Uh, nice. We have one coming up, the spring mashup that we're gonna take off on Molly's mm-hmm. on May fourteenth. Um, that'll be a 68 mile route and we're going to invite cyclists from from Maryland, North Carolina, whoever can come. Okay. Um, and we'll we'll do that just, you know, fellowship and have some fun, some spicy fun. Okay. You know, there'll be different levels of cyclists, you know, you have your your A pluses, your That's A's, right. B's and C's, but you know, every ride's a race in my opinion, so <laughs> it's going to be some spicy fun. Okay. And then we'll also have the uh, the summer mashup, which was our big event last year. We had over a okay. hundred cyclists that came down to Osborne Boat Landing to go do. Um, nice. I think it was around fifty ish miles. Okay. Um, we did Libby Hill and then rode out towards Verona. That was Ooh. really fun. Um, so we'll do that again. Um, probably change the route up a little bit. And on top of that, I'm going to continue pursuing this this racing thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how long I'll do racing, but I want to see how far I can progress in it. You know, right now I'm cat four and I'm pretty sure within the next race or two, mm-hmm. um, I'll probably catch up to cat three, um, okay. just off of points. Yeah. Um, but I would like to see how far I can progress, increase okay. my fitness and, um, yeah, let's just see why not. If I can be an ambassador for people to inspire and motivate people, I don't mind being that, uh, that, that vessel. Okay. Uh, it's, it's nice when you go out and travel and you see other big cyclists and they're like, yo, you know, you yeah. inspire me. You're, I didn't think I could race and I'm seeing you race and it's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, cool, great. Yeah. yeah, you can definitely do it, man. Like, yeah. don't don't fall victim to the stereotype that, you know, big cyclists can't do can't right. do this or that. You can, you just got to ride smart. So, yeah, you know, I just want to keep it going. It's, it's helping my mental space. It's, it's changed my lifestyle. You okay. know, I've gone two years without touching weights and I'm probably as fit as I've ever been. So, okay. I just love what cycling has done for me. And how does that feel from, I, I assume you still remember life in, you know, 2015, 2016, how it felt and, and physically, mm-hmm. right? And, and how you feel now? Like, how does that, how does that feel, man? Because you, you've lost I, a lot of weight. You're, you're I feel dead. more, I feel more alive than, than I felt then. And I've been, you know, there's been points where I've been really fit, you know, lifting weights and whatnot. Okay. But like right now, I am so alert and alive and it's not even just the fitness. It's like, you know, like I said, the cycling is it's therapeutic. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It gets such a sense of adventure. Um, I used to ride motorcycles a lot. And like, mm-hmm. you would think, that, okay, going from a motorcycle to a bicycle, you're going much slower. But like, it's almost a similar high I would get from riding a motorcycle. Really? Okay. Um, being on these bikes. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I, I highly recommend it to anybody. Okay. Okay. Um, and what's something... What's something you would want to tell yourself when you were riding with your coworkers? Like, what's something you wish you could have shared with yourself when you were, you know, still riding in street clothes with your coworkers, kind of thing? Uh, like, some some information. Somehow, magic, you could tell yourself something. What's something you would have wanted to share with yourself um, about your riding then, outside of winning lottery numbers or something like that? Mm. A good question. Um... Yeah, put on those uh those tights sooner. 
put, those, put those tights on sooner, man. Don't 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 subject yourself to this pain and torture. Put your pride aside. You know, you look cute in, in tights. Put them okay. on. <laughs> you know, I have to ask more people how soon, how quickly they got into the arrow outfits at, from from riding from street clothes, like because there's. I think for men, I think there's got to be a moment to like, okay, I'm doing this. Like, I'm a clear moment of like, yeah, okay, I'm just I'm gonna do this, whatever. Um, either way, um, <laughs> um, so um, Andre, I I, I want to thank you, man, for yeah, thank for you. I out. really appreciate it. You're doing a great great thing with this, you know. Yeah, well, thank you, man. I uh, I enjoy the conversations. I've enjoyed this one. Um, you know, I look forward to people hearing it and, and enjoying it and. Um, uh, I, I appreciate your time and thank you for coming out. Man. Thank you again. I hope this can inspire and motivate somebody. Awesome.